Six foot two in his socks, Michael's impressive height makes him a double threat for opposing teams and almost impossible to stop from set pieces. Born on September 26, 1976, in the small East German town of Gorlitz, he was the only child of Stefan and Karen Ballack. At a young age, his father's job as an engineer took him and his family to Chemnitz. It was here, at the age of seven, that the future German captain started to play football. With encouragement from Stefan, who had himself played second division football, Michael instantly took to the game, and in no time at all, he was playing effectively off both feet. The management at Chemnitzer FC, or as it was then named, FC Karl Marx Stadt, were ecstatic to have such a great young talent in the side. After spending 12 years in the junior ranks at Chemnitz, he signed his first professional contract thanks to his brilliant performances in the midfield. I still have this book where all the games are written down. This is the original book from the time when Michael started with us. These performances earned him the nickname Little Kaiser, after the Kaiser himself, Franz Beckenbauer. Michael was a real team player and integrated himself into the team 100%. Although he already knew at the time that he was something special. That must be said. Little Kaiser made his professional debut on August 4, 1995, at the age of 18. Although Chemnitz lost the game 2-1, Michael did enough to hold his spot. The next season saw him starting to hit his straps, scoring 10 times for the Sky Blues. These performances caught the eye of FC Kaiserslautern manager Otto Rehagel, and young Michael was signed to the newly promoted Division I club. Joining Kaiserslautern gave Michael Ballack the opportunity to test his skills in one of the top competitions in Europe, the Bundesliga. Kaiserslautern, who had just been promoted from Division II, gave Little Kaiser his first minutes in top flight football against Karlsruhe SC, although he only came on at the end of the game. After 16 appearances in his first season, which saw Kaiserslautern claim the Bundesliga title, he went on to become a regular the following year, appearing 30 times and scoring four goals. In 1999, the young midfielder was transferred to Bayer Leverkusen for a fee of around 4.1 million euros. Handed a more attacking role by coaches, Christoph Daum and Klaus Topmoller, he thrived and almost led Bayer to the league title in his first year. In 2002, Leverkusen had a terrible season, which they later labelled the treble horror. Their most painful defeat came in the Champions League final against Real Madrid. Leading into the final three, there was doubt as to whether Ballack would play due to a foot injury. Whether Michael Ballack will play tomorrow is still questionable. He injured his foot on Saturday. Nothing is broken, but there's a lot of swelling. We'll have to wait and see. He couldn't play at all yesterday. After watching him score 25 times in 2001-2002, Leverkusen struggled to hold on to him. Looking to claim more titles, Michael ended up signing with Bayern Munich for a fee of close to 13 million euros. With an impressive 2002 World Cup behind him, Ballack was keen to keep on form with his new club. He didn't disappoint, scoring 15 goals in his first year and helping Munich claim the Bundesliga crown. Bayern also won the German Cup to top off a brilliant season for their new recruit. The following season saw both Michael and Bayern suffer from a premiership hangover. Although they challenged for trophies, they were unable to win the big games and lost both titles to Werder Bremen. On a personal level, Michael scored just nine goals, his worst return in three years. But both he and the club once again found their top gear in 2004-2005, winning the double for the second time in three seasons. It seemed both Ballack and Bayern were on course to etch their names in the Bundesliga history books. The following season, Munich started strongly, 
but suffered a blow when their gun midfielder left to test his skills in one of Europe's most lucrative leagues, the EPL. The time has come, or the last possibility for me at the age of 29, to dare and take this step. I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I think Chelsea is a top club, which, when you look at the English league, they strongly dominate. Also, when you look at the points, and internationally too, they have played a lot of very good games. It's just a very interesting club. Having made the decision to move on, Michael was keen to leave Bayern Munich on a high. And what better way than to win the Bundesliga title for a third time in four years. Their title defence hopes looked promising. However, it soon became clear that the battle for the Bundesliga 43rd title would be a tight race. Their closest rivals were Hamburg and 2003-2004 champions were to Bremen. After a hard-fought title race, Bayern Munich were once again declared champions, but only just. Despite boasting a greater goal difference and outscoring Bayern, Werder Bremen finished the season in second place, five points behind Munich. This was the Bavarians' 20th league title, the most won by any German Division I club. Michael finished the season scoring 14 goals in the Premiership, the seventh highest tally in the league. The talented midfielder was leaving Bayern on the perfect note. However, no amount of champagne could drown out the mixed emotions he felt on leaving the club. Even winning a third Bundesliga title with Bayern couldn't stem the tears as he left the Munich change rooms for the last time. There's always a bit of melancholy when you say goodbye and lose such a talented player as we did today. But such is life. Sure, when you see this, it's obvious that Bayern has a huge amount of fans. Not just in Munich, but also elsewhere. I will definitely miss something. During his time at Germany's most successful club, Michael cemented his reputation as one of the world's leading attacking midfielders, scoring 58 times in 154 games for the club. On May 15, 2006, the out-of-contract Ballack joined Chelsea on a free transfer. After making his EPL debut against Blackburn on August 27, Chelsea's new recruit went on to enjoy a solid first season. No mean feat against the top flight players of the EPL. I feel that in the first the training sessions, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, the tempo is high, yeah, it's, it's very fast and the good quality and high quality, and, um, I think is, is no one special player. I, I'm happy to play with all these good players and uh, uh, yes, uh, there are very, very good teams in the Premier League, not one, two, I think Man U, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham. Despite his valiant efforts to mix it with the world's best, he was sidelined for an extended period in early 2007 with an ankle injury. He was out of the game for eight months, and although some feared the injury could end his career, he made his return in December 2007 during a 2-0 win over Liverpool. Michael went on to score vital goal after vital goal as the trophy season advanced. Unfortunately, however, Chelsea finished runners-up in the league, FA Cup and Champions League, leaving Michael with his second treble horror. The following season, he and Chelsea made amends by winning the FA Cup. By now in his 30s, the veteran star signed a new one-year contract in June 2009. Approaching his 500th professional football game, Michael Ballack's best performances to date have been at Bayern Munich averaging more than one goal every three games. With his domestic career going from strength to strength at Chemnitzer FC, Michael was called up to play for Germany's under-21 team on March 26, 1996. The 19-year-old played a total of 19 matches for the national under-21 side before he was invited to play for the senior team just over three years later. His debut came on April 28, 1999 in a match against Scotland. After playing for just 63 minutes in Euro 2000, the young midfielder made the most of his chances in his next international tournament, the 2002 FIFA World Cup. 
With more game time, he scored three times in the competition. Although his first two goals were pivotal in Germany's success, his third goal would go down as the most important international goal of his career so far. Scoring in the 75th minute of their semi-final clash with South Korea, Balak kept a cool head under pressure and sent his country to the World Cup final with a 1-0 victory. Unfortunately, it was a final that Michael would miss, as a yellow card in the latter stages of the game resulted in a suspension. Germany eventually went down to Brazil 2-0 in the final. Despite his suspension, Michael went home from Asia a World Cup hero. Following Euro 2004, after Germany's poor results, he was handed the captaincy by newly appointed manager Jürgen Klinsmann. The weitere, um Another important thing, which I spoke to the players about, especially Oliver Kahn and Michael Ballack, is that Michael Ballack will be captain of the German national team, and Oliver Kahn will be his deputy. For me, there's a simple reason for this. I wanted to have an outfield player who was in contact with all members of the team on the field. Now pushing 30, Balak was overwhelmed by the honour of captaining his country. It makes me happy that he has such confidence in me and has given me so much responsibility. For me, it's a big honour to be captain of the national team. And that's why I was very happy. With the 2006 FIFA World Cup on the horizon, Michael's role as captain was to knock his side into the best possible shape ahead of their greatest challenge. He led from the front of the 2005 Confederations Cup, scoring four goals and leading his country to a third place finish. He and his German side were in peak form and with Germany playing host to the World Cup, local expectations were high. However, Michael's campaign didn't get off to the best start, as he missed their first game with a calf strain. He soon overcame the injury and appeared in all of Germany's remaining matches. In his second game, he was named Man of the Match, with Germany thrashing Ecuador 3-0 and progressing through to the knockout stage undefeated. After downing Sweden 2-0, Germany met Argentina in the quarterfinals. With the score one all at the end of extra time, it was Michael's DFB 11 that came through 4-2 on penalties. Once again, he was named man of the match. The semi-finals saw Germany lose 2-0 to eventual winners Italy. With the scores level for 118 minutes, the Italians broke the hearts of the host nation by scoring twice in two minutes. Despite the loss, the Germans regrouped and in front of 52,000 fans at the Gottlieb Daimler Stadion, Stuttgart Michael's men won the third place playoff 3-1 against Portugal. After a reasonably successful World Cup campaign where he was named in FIFA's World Cup All-Star team, Michael was struck down with an ankle injury. He returned in 2008 and was a hugely influential figure in the midfield for Germany at Euro 08. After missing the first game, he steered Germany all the way to the final, where they eventually lost 1-0 to Spain. Nevertheless, he was named in the team of the tournament. Now, with all eyes set on the next World Cup, the boy from Gorlitz will be hoping to lead his country to their fourth World Cup title. Having played for his country nearly 100 times, Balak has come close to winning major international tournaments on four occasions. Although most of Balak's time is taken up by training, playing and travelling to football games, over his career he has been more than proactive with the little time that he has away from the game. On July 14, 2008, Balak tied the knot with his long-term girlfriend, Simone Lamb. The couple, who already have three children together, Lewis born in 2001, Emilio born in 2002 and Geordie in 2005, were married at a yacht club in the posh southern German town of Starnberg. Lamb, who wore a white wedding gown, 
could thank Ballack's former coach at Kaiserslautern, Otto Rehagel, for Ballack's steady lifestyle. While Michael was with Kaiserslautern, he suggested that the German captain should get into a stable relationship. The Tuesday wedding was met with unseasonal rain, as the guests were seated in a beautiful marquee on the water's edge. The A-list guests included German Football Association Sports Director Michael Sammer and coach of FC Cologne Christoph Dahl. Despite being the middle of the off-season, the newlywed couple could only enjoy a short period of each other's company, as the 31-year-old midfielder was due back at training with Chelsea immediately after their honeymoon. Two years prior to the big day, Ballack was busy with other off-field activities. During 2006, the Chelsea midfielder released his biography, simply titled Michael Ballack, The Biography. Written by Ewan Reedy, the book gives a fascinating insight into his philosophy on football and life, as well as the ups and downs of his career. Although this may not have been the happiest day of his life, it certainly was a huge achievement and will no doubt give some extra green to his bank balance. Balak joined the campaign against AIDS in May 2006 via joining UNAIDS. UNAIDS, with the help of celebrities the likes of Balak, hopes that they can inform today's youth about the dangers of the disease. Michael was more than happy to help out. Well, I think uh, AIDS is everybody's business and uh, they ask me and of course I will help. I think football is uh, the most popular sport in the world and uh, um, yeah, a lot of people know footballer, they look up to us and uh, so I think uh, we should fight AIDS together. UNAIDS aims to break down the stigma around people who suffer from the illness while also promoting safe sex. Over the course of his exciting career, Michael Ballack has played alongside and been inspired by some of the greatest players of the modern era. His Chelsea teammate and fellow midfielder Frank Lampard has enjoyed a career in professional football that has spanned almost 15 years. Starting out at West Ham, he moved to Chelsea in 2001, after six seasons with the Hammers. Two years before joining Chelsea, he debuted for England in October 1999 against Belgium. Named the UEFA Club Midfielder of the Year in 2007-2008, he has played a pivotal role in Chelsea's recent success, winning an impressive eight titles with the club. Former Chelsea teammate and Ukrainian striker Andriy Shevchenko made his senior football debut in 1994 for Dynamo Kiev. In 1999, after 117 games with Kiev, he moved to AC Milan. He followed up successful stints at Kiev and Milan with a transfer to Chelsea in 2006. However, poor form at Stamford Bridge saw him return to Dynamo Kiev in 2009. Fellow countryman Lukas Podolski took the world by storm in the 2006 FIFA World Cup, where he was named the Gillette Best Young Player and scored three goals, including a double against Sweden. Podolski began his club career with Cologne in 2003, where he scored 46 times from 81 appearances. Shortly before his World Cup heroics, he agreed to a transfer to Bayern Munich. However, his time at the powerful club didn't live up to expectations and after a few average seasons, he returned to Cologne in 2009. Internationally, however, Podolski held his good form in Euro 2008 and was named in the team of the tournament. One of the greatest goalkeepers of all time, Oliver Kahn, started his career with Karlsruhe SC in 1987 before moving to Bayern Munich in 1994. Kahn is recognised as one of the most successful German footballers of the modern era winning 17 club titles, including eight German championships, six German cups, and the UEFA Champions League. Playing 86 times for his country, his greatest achievement was undoubtedly receiving the FIFA World Cup Golden Ball in 2002 for the best player in the tournament. Kahn retired from football in 2008. Recognized as the greatest German footballer to grace a football pitch, Franz Beckenbauer is most renowned for his part in two World Cup victories his first as a player in 1974 and the second as manager in 1990. He played the majority of his club career with Bayern Munich, where he spent most of his time in defence 
and has often been credited with inventing the role of sweeper. Winning 20 club titles, he also received over 15 individual honours, including two Ballon d'Ors. With a successful career coming to a close, Michael Ballack now has time to enjoy the fruits of his football labours. Not only does he earn a handy salary of 7.6 million euros a year at Chelsea, he has also made a tidy sum from sponsors. Such as sportswear manufacturer Adidas, which promotes a line of Ballack products as part of their lucrative Predator range. Aside from Adidas, Michael is also sponsored by Coca-Cola, McDonald's and T-Mobile, adding an extra 2 million euros to his annual income. His salary at Chelsea puts him at number five on the footballer's money list. Blues teammate Frank Lampard comes a close sixth, while Barcelona's Lionel Messi is way out in front, earning 12 million euros a year. With close to 500 club games to his name, Michael has achieved an amazing amount of team honours. Participating in 13 title wins, including three Bundesliga titles with Bayern Munich and two FA Cups with Chelsea. Playing for his country, he has finished a respectable second and third in the past two World Cups. Individually, he has amassed a list of personal honours any footballer would be proud of such as winning the German Footballer of the Year in 2002, 2003 and 2005. He has been named in FIFA's 100 Greatest Living Players and was included in the team of the tournament in Euro 2004 and 2008 and the 2002 and 2006 FIFA World Cup. His best playing years may be behind him, but Michael Ballack will no doubt be giving his all in the lead up to the upcoming World Cup. Renowned for his ability to step up when his country needs him most, his experience will count for a lot come World Cup time. While his future at Chelsea remains uncertain, there is no doubt that a whole range of clubs will be queuing to sign him if he leaves the Blues. <laughs>